Hi, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. I haven't exactly hidden my feelings in the past about plant tonic type products, things that sell themselves as soil conditioners or plant vitalizers or other such nonsense. They're very non-specific in their claims and they are a particularly poor value for money for gardeners. I won't spare their feelings. I'm definitely gonna go and name names later in the video and talk about the warning signs. But first I wanted to do a demonstration. I figure show, don't tell. And I wanna show you how bad a value these concoctions can be. Let's start with water because most most of these concoctions that they put together and are overpriced on the internet are liquid formulations. I'll talk more in a minute about why they tend to sell them in liquid form like this. But what I'm gonna put in here is I'm gonna go ahead and put some yard and garden compost. Now this is actually not a bad compost. It's from our municipal recycling program. And uh, you can buy this in by the truckload. Lisa tells me that we paid something like $40 a yard for this, landed on the farm. Delivery can be a significant portion of the cost. So what's going in there now is about three gallons worth, and that's worth in the range of about 60 cents worth of compost. Not bad stuff. I will stir that in and let it settle down. And what you'll get is you'll get a compost tea. And I talk about the benefits of compost tea. Now, from my point of view, all this good stuff, all this good organic stuff in here is going to settle to the bottom of the container. And what I'm gonna get is kind of a brownish liquid that's left over. Nothing wrong with that at all. I hear people t claim the benefits of compost tea all the time for feeding at home. But again, the value of what's going in here is about 60 cents worth and the good part the part that's organic is settling to the bottom i'm going to use that in the garden elsewhere i'm not even going to sell that in part of this liquid mix here so let's let that settle down and i'll show you the next ingredient as i'm putting together this concoction i'm going to put together an ingredient panel as well just like they would put onto the real products on the market uh, obviously the first thing in here is going to be that compost that yard and garden compost and the next thing will be kelp i'm going to put a half cup of kelp in here now the kelp that comes to me is dry and green and a powder like this but when I put it into the liquid, it actually takes, it settles to the bottom and it takes this amber color. That amber color is kind of what I'm looking for in the uh, concoction here. And of course, as you can see, all the good stuff, it settled to the bottom again, but I'm gonna sell the liquid. So I'm gonna throw in a half cup of that and may as well throw in my example here as well. By the way, the value of the kelp that I just added in there was about $2. I bought it retail, so I probably overpaid for it. I could buy it for less in a big sack, but I just wanted to simulate what you could do at home. The next thing I'm gonna add here is humic acid. And in comparison to the kelp that I just added, it turns the water a much, much darker color. Now, humic acid, as you'd buy it in a granular form like this, does not dissolve particularly easily into water. It did a little bit, but I had to add a little bit of an alkaline solution to make it dissolve all the way. So I've done that part now and I'm going to go ahead and add this which is in the water already dissolved which is a quarter cups worth and it's about 80 cents worth of humic acid because people say that works great Okay, so let's talk about the effectiveness of those ingredients in this thing here. And I'm actually not gonna pick apart the research for this part of the video on humic acid or seaweed or compost teas. There is a lot of conflicting information about there. Even the people who sell humic acid full time acknowledge that there's this kind of a snake oil problem with the, all of the humic acid products that are on the market there. So what I'm not adding them for is a specific NPK value or nutrient value for the plants. If I were to measure it right now, if I were to throw it through a lab analysis, I'm sure it would end up with 0.0 something NP and K all the way down. So it, it probably does not what's going to dissolve into the liquid itself probably does not have high levels of nutrient value directly for your plants and the total that i've added in as you can tell if you've been tallying the numbers is not particularly high but let's say we wanted to call this a plant nutrient let's say we wanted it to say we had some nutrient value in that then you would send it into the lab and you'd get those 0, 0.0 something let's say we wanted to add oh say potassium in there so sulfate of, of potash into the mix there i could add about uh, let's say a dollar seventies worth of sulfate of potash, which would, which would bump it right up to the second in the ingredient panel in terms of weight per volume. Uh, and that would give me about a 0.4% uh, potassium in there. Even if I included that sulfate of potash at a dollar seventy, my total cost for the ingredients going into this barrel are about $5.11 by my math, which I took earlier. So $5 worth of ingredients into this bucket, 
all the good stuff has settled down to the bottom. I strain off the liquid and I get, say, 50 gallons out of this. How much am I going to sell it for? Well, if you follow the template of what other plant tonic people are charging, it's somewhere in the range of about $50 a gallon. I've even seen one called HB101 that charges $200 per liter of fluid, all without saying specifically what it will do, how it will do it, and showing any evidence that it actually works. And that's the real trick behind this is that the less you say, the better. You can make any claims you want, but you have to use significantly vague language so that you don't get in trouble with any of the regulators. For instance, if you call it a nutrient solution, then you'll have to put on that nutrient analysis on there. Now, of course, it sounds like people aren't too sensitive to what those numbers really are. It can be 0.04, it can be 0.4% potassium, not a lot. You can tell them to dilute it by 32 times. So common sense would tell you you're not delivering a lot of nutrients to your plants, but that's your only obligation is just to say how much nutrients is in the product. You can't really say that it's a pesticide because pesticides are regulated. Then you'd have to do show studies that the plant or the product is effective. But in the case of just saying something like it's a plant health enhancer, that it helps plants deal with stress, that it improves nutrient uptake. If you're su sufficiently vague like that, then you don't have to prove anything. You can say anything you want about the product and you really have to just sit under the halo of compost tea, kelp and humic acids and just say the things that other people are saying about them. So I'm going to give this a little bit of stir, let it brew for a while, and then I will give you, I'll insert a shot of the vaguely brown, sweet smelling liquid that comes out of the other end that is worth $50 a gallon. And really the question you have to ask yourself isn't whether you believe in kelp or humic acids. Those I trust you to research a little bit, although again, there's a lot of conflicting evidence. What I ask you to look for is the question of, would you pay $2,500 for $5 worth of ingredients. So even if you trust that compost is going to help you, why wouldn't you put compost directly into the garden? If you believe that kelp is going to help you, why wouldn't you put kelp meal or a more concentrated kelp product, or even better yet, just straight seaweed if you have access directly into the garden? That's what I'm asking you is, what makes $5 worth of ingredients worth $2,500? All right, I mentioned at the front of the video that I wouldn't mind naming names, especially of some of the biggest culprits. So I guess this is the part of the video where I spill some tea. So here's my actual tea, and this is my compost tea. So take your pick which one I should spill. The first one I'm gonna talk about is a mix called Super Thrive, and it's extremely well known, especially amongst rose people. The uh, folk wisdom is to add a bunch when you're transplanting or when you soak your roots to help reduce stress. Let's have a look at their uh, claims on the product here because they are so vague. For instance, a claim like improves plant vigor. Measured by what? How are you going to tell whether it's made more vigor or less vigor? What number can you attach that to? This is the hallmark of the claims that you'll see on these kinds of products. Um, what, how they describe themselves, a plant vitamin solution. Um, so again, they're not saying that we're adding nutrients. They're not saying anything about what they are. They're just saying we're a vaguely defined vitamin solution. We relieve stressed plants. We uh, are for all stages of plant growth. Uh, another one that was uh, particularly amusing on the front here is it says, use for uh, maintenance for all horticultural and agricultural needs. What does that even mean? I saw a, a writer quip, does that mean I can grease my tractor with it? Because that's, a, that's an agricultural need. So it is exceptionally vague. The mode of action on this, they say, is something like B1 vitamins which has kind of been debunked in horticultural circles as being something that helps your plants with stress. If I wanted to add B1 vitamins to that barrel back there, I would have just bought at the horse feed store something like a thiamine supplement and thrown it in there, but there's no evidence that that will actually work to help your plants. Uh, the other thing they say here is that it is a landscaper's best friend. I'm like, I, I'm not even sure how to evaluate that statement. Here's a product that has been on the market for something like 80 years. And if I look through their website, what is conspicuously absent is any claims in terms of numbers and also any kind of evidence. I mean, they've had 80 years to show some research, do a large scale study. Obviously they're charging in this case, $200 for a gallon. 
$200 for a gallon. That must be super effective. And it does concern me a little bit when they say that their uh, rate of usage, and I'm just gonna look at their product usage chart here, is like a drop per gallon of mix. Well, how much are you really putting into that? Now, I understand why they give those extremely low dosage rates is because they're charging $200 a gallon. Uh, somebody isn't going to feel very good about their product if it doesn't go a long way. So uh, this is the placebo effect on steroids is what I would say. And uh, now somebody might look at me and say, well, wait a second, have you used it? Well, sure, it was in my parents' shed when I was a kid, and I tried it out on transplants and seedlings and didn't find any difference. But that's just anecdotal evidence. And the thing is, you could have dueling anecdotal evidence. This is why we push towards research and large-scale blind studies. If belief is a factor, then it's probably not effective. The next one I want to talk about is HB101, uh, which is a Japanese product. And by the way, if you see the HB101 Ninja jump up behind me, give me a little bit of warning here so I can get away from their fists of fury, let's say. Uh, but HB101 is another one that makes these exceptionally vague claims about what they're supposed to do. It says, makes your flowers smile, which I understand is just marketing talk, but what does it actually do? If you go further down, it says that it describes the product as a natural plant vitalizer. Again, that term, vitalizer, which is um, meaningless in terms of actual results. Uh, increases longevity of flowers. Okay, that's a specific claim. Where's the study? Uh, improve your harvests. Improve in what way? Maybe you just feel better while you're harvesting. I don't know. Uh, reduce costs. Okay, quantify that. Uh, grow with fewer chemicals. Well, you can do that whether you whether you buy HB 101 or not. Um, I'm not sure what, again, coming back to that issue of mode of action, how is this supposed to do the thing that it's doing? It says that it helps with uh, the absorption of phosphorus, nitrogen, and potassium. I don't actually know what's in this product. I haven't looked at the guaranteed analysis. I actually couldn't find it on their site. So they're not really saying how much nitrogen, potassium, or phosphorus. They say there's some sodium in there and some calcium in there. Sodium is not particularly well known as being a good thing for plants, although in small amounts it might not hurt. Um, but again, go, going back to that issue of, well, what is the rate of of application on this. What they actually show here is a dilution rate of one part in 10,000. And this is what again goes back to that issue of that crazy dilution rate kind of fools people into thinking that the value of what's in that product is so dramatic that it's going to uh, you know, improve them and they can just mix it at a very small rate. And that justifies what in this case is between $100 and $200, depending on whether you're looking at American or US or Canadian funding for one liter, so a quarter of a gallon. Uh, that's an incredible amount of money that you're spending once again without them showing any evidence. Now I did look at what they offered as evidence when they did the the circuit on cable TV and that kind of thing and they showed some quite vague pictures from a study they say happened where something that wasn't fed at all, like zero water in a, in a hydroponic solution, had poorer results than something that was fed with HB 101 that had slightly better results. Now cherry picking pictures out of a study that nobody ever gets to read hardly qualifies as evidence on my part. And that's what irritates me about this is that they're charging hundreds of dollars for their product for a liter of it, and they're not justifying it. Again, extraordinary claims uh, require extraordinary proof and they're offering no evidence at all. I'm gonna do one more here. It's hard to resist because this one actually says plant tonic in the name. It's Jumpstart Plant Tonic from Amazon in Canada here and it's $163 for one gallon. So what does it say it will do? It says that it helps plants thrive. Again, with that exceptionally vague language, it just says vitamins and minerals. Okay, what context is that in? And super concentrate. Super concentrate is a funny thing to say about a product that has 0.1% nitrogen and that you're expected to dilute by many, many times. And for instance, in this case, they're saying use uh, half a tablespoon per gallon of water. That is a very light dilution. So this is not super concentrate as far as I'm concerned. What does it include? Well, all of the, uh, 
buzzwords. It has a kelp meal, just like I added there. How much? Who knows? Barley meal, alfalfa meal, mushroom compost, bat guano. All of these things are sourceable. Some of them are pretty reasonable as well. I mean, you can buy uh, a barley meal or alfalfa meal at the feed store. So they've taken this, mixed it in quantities yet to be disclosed into a bucket like that, made no claims other than it is a plant vitalizer or that it has minerals in it, and then put it into a bottle for $160 a pop. And this is the pattern that you're going to see on uh, on. Amazon, but certainly any kind of a plant store where they're selling these high priced liquid primarily supplements so that they can quote these high, low dilution ratios. Uh, and so basically let's recap the warning signs here. One, what they call the product. They don't call it a plant food because then they'd have to prove that it's a plant food. They don't call it a pesticide because then they'd have to prove it's a pesticide. So they will say something vague like plant vitalizer, plant vitamin mix, soil conditioner, that kind of thing. But then they will quote all of the usual claims of things like compost tea or kelp or so on uh, that are quite vague again as well. Improves this. Uh, enhances that but with no numbers attached to them at all and then when you ask them to say okay where's the evidence of that they may point to a study that somebody else did on seaweed somewhere else but it's not talking about the concentrations that are in their product they've never proven their product uh, scientifically in a large scale scale study which should be a concern for you if they're asking you to spend 150 200 dollars per gallon or more so I hope that you found that useful or at least uh, that I've given it my best shot at debunking some of these products and if you have any questions about something specific drop that into the comments below the video I'll see what I can do to help